Hey folks, welcome back. Time for another entry in the Cheap and Cheerful series. This time we've got another double entry. We've got one puzzle from Yushin here on the left. This is the Eight Petals Cube. And on the right we have the Ready Minx from Moyu. Both of these puzzles are inspired by the well-known Ready Cube designed by Oscar Van Deventer. Uh, both are well within the Cheap and Cheerful price range and both are really worthy additions to the collection and really well-performing, highly functional puzzles. So we'll start with the, the eight petals cube. Now, if you look at the packaging here, you'll notice a big red M on the right. And yes, in fact, this puzzle, despite being not an official WCA speed event, has been magnetized, which is just fantastic. Um, the puzzle turns really smoothly, uh, in, in no small part due to these nice curvy cuts. And the addition of magnets means that every turn you make snaps beautifully into place. It's just a, a really extremely nice puzzle to turn and to scramble and solve. Very, very enjoyable in every way. And uh, it's, a, it's an ideal addition to the collection. It's not a puzzle that's going to keep you up at night with its challenge, but it's really enjoyable to scramble and, and solve. And I'll get to that, uh, to the reasons why in a minute. Um, as you can see, it is a corner turning puzzle. And there's really only two piece types to deal with on this puzzle. We have the corners, which rotate in place, so they're easy enough to solve. And then we have these edge pieces, which can be scrambled um, and misoriented as well. Um, in total, this puzzle is capable of about one and a half trillion different scrambles, different permutations. So not a huge amount, not a patch on the uh, three by three, for example, but definitely much more than something like the two by two Rubik's cube. So it's far from a trivial puzzle. Um, but what's nice about it is that you really don't need to worry about you know, memorizing any sequences or algorithms to get a good solve going. You can just work completely with your intuition, your knowledge and experience of twisty puzzling to get through it. And uh, it's, it's really enjoyable for an intuitive puzzle. And there's enough complexity in it, there's enough variability in any given scramble um, that it's really enjoyable to just pick it up of an evening and uh, solve it a few times, just to just to get yourself a little bit of puzzling enjoyment um, without you know dipping yourself full into a hardcore puzzle like an Aton Star or something like that. Um, so I think it's a fantastic addition to anyone's collection, particularly if you're if you're new to corner turning puzzles. This is a great introduction to those kind of puzzles and, and how they work, and it's definitely more interesting than something like the Dino Cube. Um, where you just, you know, you have edge pieces turning around the corners and, and that's it. Um, this one we have at least two piece types and there's some more interesting stuff going on. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through a solve a little bit here. Um, I, I won't really be spoiling anything for you because there's no algorithms anyway. And, you know, you may develop your own approach to the puzzle, uh, but it's just nice to, to kind of solve it slowly while I'm, while I'm talking. Um, so the original version of this puzzle was, as I mentioned, was the Ready Cube by Oscar Van Deventer. Uh, it's functionally identical to this puzzle, but the difference here is really just in the aesthetics and the turning quality. So you can still get the Ready Cube original version from Moyu, uh, but this version from Yushin, I think, really is the one to get um, just for the functionality of it. It just turns really well, really enjoyable to use. Uh, but that's not to say the Moyu one is bad. It certainly isn't. Uh, it's still a functional puzzle, and of course, it's nice to have one in the collection to support Oscar, who has designed innumerable, incredible puzzles over the years, uh, and he definitely deserves to get the royalties and the recognition for having designed this uh, this Ready Cube in the first place. Uh, and of course, this puzzle has had a, a decent amount of influence. A number of other designers have made puzzles uh, relating to this concept. So, of course, we have the Ready Minx here. Um, but there are other puzzles like the Bubbloids from Karl Hoff, which are also related to this. They're kind of uh, ready cube cuboids in a sense. Uh, so they're pretty interesting in that way. Um, so if you're looking for a bit of additional spice after you've mastered this guy, then there are other options as well awaiting you. If you uh, would like to have another corner, tr corner turning puzzle with a bit more interesting facets to it. Um, but I think your first step really should be the Ready Minx in that respect because uh, it does have some additional qualities that uh, add a little bit of challenge. And because it is a dodecahedron, it is more of a marathon solve. So as you can see, I mean, even while I'm talking here, um, I could just breeze my way through a solve of this puzzle. Uh, but don't let that make you think that it's, uh, 
in any way sort of boring or tedious or, or too simple. It really is a lot of fun to solve. And definitely there's a ton of room to improve your solving abilities, get more efficient and elegant with your solves uh, and, and work on the speed solving element. So I will link in the description. There is a random state scrambler uh, that has been produced, which you can find online. Um, if you are going to practice speed solving this, or even if you just want to have some good scrambles for it, uh, for your own fun, then you should use the, the uh, bare bones ready scrambler that I'll, I'll link below. The reason for that is there are some other scramblers like on the uh, speedcubingextraevents.org page, but that one is not random state. And if you use that, you will get artificially low times. Um, the For those of you who don't know, a random state scrambler essentially is where the computer simulates the cube and rips all the pieces off, kind of explodes all the pieces off the cube, reassembles them randomly, then orchestrates a very efficient solution of the puzzle back to solved, and then reverses the sequence of that solution, reverses all the moves to then generate a sequence to go from the solved state to that original scrambled state. And so what that does is it makes sure that the uh, the scramble that you're going to get has a suitably long solution and that it does have a truly random origin. So um, in the past, when people were first starting to speed solve the ready cube, uh, they were getting some record times of two or three seconds. Um, but then once people started using the random state scrambler, those times got longer and longer. I think you're more likely to get at the very top end, maybe five or six seconds, uh, which doesn't sound like a big difference, but it, it really is. Um, it shows, you know, a, a lot more complexity in those scrambles. So just make sure you use that that um, bare bones ready scrambler. It's it's just a lot more fun anyway to have a properly thorough random state scramble for any puzzle. So it's nice to have that available. So that's the ready cube. Uh, I really can't say enough good good things about this puzzle. I really love it. Um, and the ready minx is a great addition once you've you've kind of had your fill of this one, or if you just want to have a little bit of an extended version of a very similar solve. Now the ready minx, as you can see, is a very obvious uh, dodecahedral sort of extension of the ready cube concept. We have the exact same types of pieces, uh, except now we're fitting them to a dodecahedral geometry. So we still have corners which just rotate in place. They don't get scrambled as such. They just get misoriented. And then we have these edge pieces with two colors and they can be flip-flopped around by turning the corners like so. Um, but now that we're on a dodecahedron, we have more possible positions for all the pieces um, because there are now three edge pieces around each corner rather than, uh, well, I guess that's the same effectively on the ready cube, uh, but they can be in more possible positions on the different faces since each face has five corners. Um, and when you then factor in the fact that you've got 12 faces and a lot more pieces, then the solve takes on a much longer character, but not to the point where it becomes tedious. I find it very enjoyable. Uh, it does take a little while to scramble though, because the pieces don't move very far from their origin point with each turn. So you do have to do a lot of turns to get it nicely scrambled. But once you do that, it's a lot of fun to solve. And uh, because of the fact that you've got all these additional uh, possible permutations, uh, more colors to deal with and so on, you can end up with some additional last layer situations that don't really crop up in the normal ready cube. In particular, you can have uh, two pieces that need to be swapped on the last layer. Um, so you'll need to work out a bit of a parity algorithm. It's not, I don't think it's really parity as such. Um, and it's not too hard to work out how to do it. Uh, in the box, there is actually a little cheat sheet that is in Chinese, uh, but it has a fully diagrammed algorithm to solve that case. But I recommend just trying to do it for yourself um, because it, if you really think about it logically, how you can move pieces around the edges on the last layer, you can, you can work out a way to cycle them around uh, and get you home. And it's more satisfying to do it that way. Uh, but this is a really nice puzzle in terms of the functionality. Uh, it doesn't move quite as freely and quickly as the uh, the eight petals cube, but it does move smoothly, uh, very, very smooth. It's just, uh, it's also a little bit more awkward because the pieces are a bit smaller and you've got to kind of cup them, cup your fingers around these corners to get them moving. And there is a little bit more resistance, but uh, you know, for the, for the price, it's a really good quality puzzle. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, and it, it's really enjoyable to scramble and solve, like I said. So uh, I highly recommend adding this one to the collection, especially if you find that you enjoy the Ready Cube or the Eight Petals Cube. Um, I do recommend that when you're doing uh, piece exchanges like this, you know, three cycling things around, it is easier to hold it on the table like that, um, just because it's awkward to get both your hands around these axes and really get things 
moving the way you want them to go. Um, not a big deal, but it's just a little bit of a different uh, solving posture. Um, but yeah, I really recommend both these puzzles as additions to your collection. But in particular, I would start, of course, with the eight petals cube or the ready cube, since they're uh, functionally identical. Um, they're really enjoyable additions to your collection. And then decide, based on how you get along with that solve, whether you want to take the jump into the ready minx as well. If you would prefer a different kind of increase in challenge by increasing the order of the puzzle rather than just the number of faces uh, and changing the geometry a bit, then in my next video I'm going to talk a little bit about your options for that. I was fortunate enough over the Christmas break to get my hands on two higher order variants of the ready cube. So I'll show those off as well. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you. Both these puzzles uh, are cheap and cheerful for sure. Um, in particular, it's great to have a sort of non-WCA puzzle that's actually magnetized and fully speed cubable and just feels so excellent uh, in motion. So that's a huge note in favor of the eight petals cube. The ready minx is not quite so uh, beautiful to use as that, but still a very nice puzzle, very functional uh, and highly recommended if you enjoy this type of solve. Um, so if you've tried any other puzzles that are related to the ready cube family, if you've got any recommendations, do let me know in the comments. Uh, I have I have developed a real fondness for these corner turning puzzles of late, so I'm always looking for um, some feedback on other puzzles that you've tried. In particular, the Bubloids from the HK Now store from uh, Carl Hoff. I've heard they are pretty terrible in terms of the functionality of the puzzles, uh, but the idea of the solve really appeals to me. So if anybody has experience with those, I'd like to hear your thoughts on whether they're worth the money or not. I do... I do feel sorely tempted to uh, take the plunge because they just look very interesting to me. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice to get some some real advice if any of you have tried them for yourselves. So, uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the higher order cousins of these guys. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, shout out to me in the comments if you're out there. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll look to you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.